So far, being far. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, and uh, in day to day life, you may experience once a while people go pilgrimage. So when people go that spiritual journey, they prepare for that. That preparation inside, outside, both physical and material, both. And after you done the spiritual pilgrimage, then you start to come back to your ordinary life. And then after a few days, it becomes just a memory. And then again, that memory will help you to, to repeat the journey again in the future. So we keep doing things, but at the same time, it and in a certain level, what happens that your spiritual practice also become a repetition of memory. So as example, you go for a pilgrimage. Understand this very carefully. This is one, uh, one example, one simile. You go for a you go for a pilgrimage and then when you have it and while you having it after you just finish it maybe you decide okay next year we'll do this way next year we'll we will we will go there and next year i'll i'll going to become like this way to do that And then the, when the time come, you do it, you do it because the last year you determined, you plan, you had an idea to do it. So it was, it was in you as memory. And then what happening, you do this year because you thought about the last it in, in last year. So then the this year action become a repetition of your memory. The thing is this when the any bodily, verbally, mentally outcome or action, if it is a, if it is happen as a result of or the base or the as a foundation of the memory, it it is not a action. It is a repetition. It is not a pure, clear action. So then even just imagine in day-to-day -day life, maybe we count on a lot of activities thinking, I did good, I did that, I did this. But when you look very carefully deeper from where it comes, What is the base for that action? And you find something else. And when you go to that and you find something else, so like that, that our bodily, verbally, mentally action, even though surface level, if we do nice things, good things, but deeply it, it connected to something. 
if any action is connected to this connected to something it is not a pure action then then you have to think about it so but when you practice the vipassana and tranquility meditation and vipassana meditation in that level you come to a point to develop a wisdom to to do a action without a connection from the memory that that is where you going to experience the 100% that the capacity of your awareness because when you do it uh, as a part of memory then it is a kind of like a habitual pattern then your mind not firing and wiring each other your nerve system not connected to each other but when it come to the awareness it is totally different your entire nerve system the your whole brain everything are wiring and firing each other and that moment of awareness is kind of like a thunder why is it like a thunder your action become kind of like a thunder get this very carefully if there is no repetition and it's just hit that's it it has no idea to clinging to something it has no idea to go with something it has no idea to grasping or holding and become kind of like a habit and keep repeating it's just happened that's it it happened it disappeared can you make any action kind of like a heating thunder even that the thunder they have the sound but when it come to this art of living you make certain actions and deeply consciously with your fully awareness and it has a pure silence no sound even some others cannot recognize it but your action is so sharp clear accurate and there is no any desire to hold it to anything you just do it and you are not depending from anyone opinions you are not depending on anyone's credit you are not depending on anyone favor simply you make action so how how you can do this way there is a capacity in your mind you can become like that so there are a lot of abilities that you have you didn't see it so but when you develop this method you will see how you can use it as example there are a lot of muscles in you you didn't use it is there in in day to day activities don't think that all your muscles work no it doesn't work so when the whole your body will start to work it is something else so maybe you say you did the homework and you know how the, the all this the 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 necessary activities at home and then tell i am so tired you tired 
the more than the mental you are physically more tired but when it comes to the physical that if you really activate 100 percent your whole physical muscles you completely going to recognize something else so the brain the same the mind the same the heart the same our nerve system the same this internal awareness the same we don't use it to the highest for well, what you keep it when you're going to use it where are you going to use it so then when you have opportunity at least while you're practicing bring your best out of your practice don't hold anything i'll do this later i'll bring it later so like that you know, do it do it whenever you are available to practice in conventional life it is okay maybe without eating you keep some, some things you know i'll eat later and the jewelries you not wearing you in, in, a, in a special location garment you keep you know for a special location you know and even the conversation maybe you're not going to have the the real meaningful conversation you think i'll do it later so like that but remember this when it comes to your spiritual practice each and every sitting don't make a repetition of your memory bring the fully awareness every day to your sitting even never you observe any each and every inhalation exhalation bring your fully awareness attention to your observation so when it come to that there are few methods that you you develop it so the first one is called the sealer so the sealer means you become disciplined with the path with the practice that is very necessary and even before the before you practice and after you practice in day-to-day -day life that you you think about you are practicing and then you you slowly gather your mind towards your practice and then the certain things you stay away from especially busy 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 mind busy life when you start to practice meditation a little bit at least one hour keep calm your body before you sit and once you sit you become self-disciplined not to say think oh go here and there and, and, and mentally observe something else no you become very disciplined to to be with your primary mental object if it is inhalation exhalation if it is a sensation if it is a loving kindness meditation you you go with this and another one is called sapanyo so the sealer sapanyo so the sapanyo means sapanya is means that you already born with certain kind of awareness as a human being that another way we call common sense so you have to bring this common sense also to your practice you know otherwise that that as example to observe the inhalation exhalation if somebody say i sleep down you know i sleep with my face down and practice inhalation exhalation you know some people say they go to you know sleep and while they're sleeping observe inhalation exhalation lying down 
So someone come to you and tell, I go in and I, I sleep with my pace down. You know, maybe I keep tight my pace to the pillow and I practice inhalation, exhalation. So you have to use the common sense. It doesn't work. How it can work? When someone say, oh, posture is doesn't, no need. You, you can practice with any, any, any way, whatever you want. Then as you know that uh, headstand is very famous. I mean, nowadays, half of the world people practice headstand. Do it headstand and try to do inhalation, exhalation. Observe your inhalation, exhalation, what, what you're going to say. You, you can see that you are in, inhaling, exhaling. So the common sense. So one is discipline. It is very necessary. And to develop your spiritual practice, rather than repetition, to bring the real quality moment of practice, those are the things that you have to follow. One is the discipline. That discipline is the mainly self-discipline. And discipline with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, not to watch things like a busy, colorful things. As example, you're watching a colorful something, shiny, luminous something, and then you close your eyes and try to observe inhalation, exhalation, what will happen. Your mind is start to go like a roller coaster and reflect on that whatever the, 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 the luminous things you watch. Why? Because the eye attached to that. So that's why if you practice meditation, so that, that is a discipline duty. Before you practice meditation, at least few minutes, half an hour, one hour, you stay away from that. And hearing. Maybe whatever the music or oh, whatever you, even the chanting. If you keep listening to chanting, chanting, and then you close your eyes and try to, to bring your attention to any primary or mental object, what will happen? The, the chanting start to come inside you as a memory and disturb you. So the smell and the taste, the sensation, the thoughts the same. So then you have to be disciplined with it. Then the, the, then the third one, second one, the common sense. And in the basic level, you have to have it. All the human being, when they born to this human plane, human existence, and they all have that. So you will have it. Everyone have it. And that's why we are here. So you have to you have to activate that. Don't think when you sit and uh, that you're going to get something beyond this human life, some other planetary wisdom you're going to get. No, it's nothing to do with that. All this this that uh, that you go with your your own life. And the third one, chitta. Chitta means tranquility state. You have to look into your mind moment by moment, moment by moment. Why? It is very tricky. You know, and sometimes it is very cuckoo, your mind, our mind. So then you have to, you have to look into it and let it settle down rather than depending on thoughts developing thoughts, vomiting thoughts, let settle down. Now, then now look, are you, are you seeing the primary mental object? If you, the inhalation, exhalation, look again and again, allow it to settle down rather than thinking something else. If it is the sensation, so you know what you, what, what you observe. So again and again, again and again, develop that. So now three qualities you need. One is self-discipline and the third, second one, common sense. And the third one, 
the mind body connection and which we call the tranquility state and the body mind breathing interconnection tranquility state and the fourth one is called panya so the here panya means analytical recognition understanding another way it is called the vidarsana knowledge so common sense is a conventional knowledge that here panya means analytical knowledge so that we come with the common sense to this world but panya the analytical knowledge inside understanding you have to gain it by practicing it doesn't going to come itself so that is the important thing that you have to understand that's why we keep practice like this the mistake very mistake some people does they count on common sense as thinking it is vipassana knowledge it is not vipassana vipassana knowledge is analytical method understanding you have to practice yourself and develop your mind with the profitable skill to analyze and recognize so for that you have to have that all three qualities self discipline common sense and the tranquility state when that three things come together you gain the the another wisdom called vidarsana knowledge so the vidarsana knowledge you have to by practice by effort you have to gain so that's why we need the atapi that means effort so without effort you cannot gain the panya or the wisdom or the analytical understanding for that you need the effort what is the effort that you need this is what the effort you need drop the memory be in the moment to perform yourself independently without depending from the memory that is not easy we we depend on people we depend on things we depend on the the ideas concept believing religions because deeply inside we already develop a current we are coming from that dependence it is our nature in the when you are in the sansara means you are always depending from something when there is a time come for you to you completely 100% become free from that dependency there is no current anymore to become so the you become as a result of you depend on something so the atapi so you have the effort the deeper inside to cut your habit or the repetition or the idea to repeat and make a very independent very clear very fresh very new moment in this very moment so then another wisdom called parihariya jnana so the parihariya jnana means you do things you you perform your bodily verbally mentally actions according to necessary conditions situations environment so it then you get out of preconditioned mind 
you always inside you you completely pre-person from your memory or the habit and when you perform an action bodily action verbal action mental action that any action you perform according to that condition or the environment and then you become like water So the, your, the water has ability to adapt. So as you know, the Bruce Lee says, be like water. It has power to adapt to any situation. You can freeze it, you can boil it. You know, you can color it and you can put it to anything. It go it with the any shape. It never going to to go against anything. It always has ability to adapt. So you become with your inside deeply mentally, with your bodily, verbally, mentally action, you, you, you adapt to any situation. You have that ability, but it is very common. You use the common sense to do that. So I just give a little example. Like when you are with the baby, when you play with the baby, you get out of your identity. You get out of your position. You become so mellow and you become like a baby. And you do anything in that very moment with that without preconditioned mind see that you use it you use it with the common sense so but the thing is when the when you have the vipassana knowledge that mean when you recognize that everything everything from from this moment to your past, your future, and to this moment, this everything what you experience, impermanent. There is nothing permanent, anything. Another one is, there is nothing can bring the permanent satisfaction. satisfaction. unsatisfactory nature and there's nothing belong to self even there is no self you know why the human life is more important you know why this human life is so precious why all other in the heaven even the brahma lokas even the the high existence when they ready to leave their place, why they planning to come to human life? Even anyone to attain to enlightenment or the Buddha, why they come to the human world? Because this is the place that you can see. You can see very clearly. It is not a dogma, idea, concept. You can see this everything impermanent and ever then you can see this unsatisfactory nature you can see selflessness if no one can hide it you can see it that's why the beauty of the human world there is no any other world and there is a help for that what is that the help gain in this world getting sick and even the, in the heaven and the, the, the devas or the deities, they don't know about sickness. They don't get sick. There are no doctors. Even maybe doctors go to heaven, 
once they go to heaven there are no doctors there they don't get sick they have no idea about sickness so then they are their condition with their existence and the animal life have you seen you know, the doctors you know the dogs cats that those animals you know now many members you know that uh, centuries that you know thousand thousand years they used to be with us horse elephants we know but you have seen there are no doctors they they don't recognize the sickness the disease but the only the human can see the sickness no any other animal can recognize we getting sick you are the one who can see that that's why the prince siddhartha you know from the palace when he go he saw that getting people get sick that is the that is the most the beautiful gift that you have because you can see it but we don't care we don't use that gift why because that gift take you to the most precious experience in permanent and the unsatisfaction in it and and the selflessness so the next one that you can experience only in the human realm on the in the human existence is getting old no any other the heaven so the anywhere they have no idea about aging they there is no any other there is no any books only only we have to follow only the books you know no any books talk about birthday parties in the heaven no hell why because they have no idea about no only the human life can experience this aging getting old have you ever thought that you know you are the only one in this world you know many many billion billions you know living beings in this world countless but only you can experience the sickness and the getting old the what is the meaning of this getting old that's what the prince in that asked from the chan what is that mean no so another one is the death we are the one who can see the death understand the death experience the death before you die you can understand it that's why in, in the buddha's meditation there is a beautiful meditation technique reflect on your own death it going to completely change your life there are a lot of living beings and the deities you know in the high existence they live they have no idea about death they disappear like this they don't know they even they disappear there are animals born within another second dying so the the the, the circle of life is birth and the death it's kind of like you know moving they have no idea so but ourselves if you look very carefully that you born or you dead just imagine now you have been kind of like a passing just take a 10 you no know, lifetimes 10 times you died you born and from the bird eye view look at your own life 
you born, you dead. You born, you dead. You born, you dead. So then, when you go with the circle, you there is a question come. You born or you dead? So in the moment that we experience in like this, so then are you going to go with your death or are you going to come with the birth? What, what will happen? Some, some say, you know, that maybe your relatives, you know, everybody will cry, oh, she gone, no, oh, he gone. And another person say, oh, baby born, baby, oh, this born baby. So who you are then? Are you gone or are you king? So just if you look very carefully, you are the one who can understand this process. You have seen how the people die in very, in con very conventional way. You saw how people born. And then that will bring you some kind of wisdom to you when you are able to. That's why the Prince is done. What, what is mean dying? So then if you look very carefully, analytically, if you start to go deep a little bit, you're going to recognize something. What does this mean? And that understanding will change. So as example, it's like this, you know, the, the way you look, the completely maybe it, it's going to shift to, you know, to deeper end. So just imagine, you, you have certain kind of asset and everything, you have children and everybody around you and so on. So then some, somebody say you got, uh, you know, another one year to live and then do whatever you want with your asset and you know properties and that things and uh, so you come to a point to get ready to give this everything to others and then suddenly somebody come to you and tell hey within one year you're going to come this is the place that you're going to come this way. Now what are you going to do? Because you thought you're going to go and suddenly somebody appeared and told, you know, after one year, you're going to come. Now what are you going to do for you all the asset and everything? You know, think about it. I don't know. I don't know what will what you're going to do, you know, but just think about it. So that's why when you recognize that what is the death mean, you get out of this puzzle. You get out of this tangle. Then you recognize it is not coming or going. That is the beauty of the death. But, but, but what we seeing as the death, we just seeing this coming and going. So like that, you are the only one can experience this. Three things. What are those three things? Basically, sickness or the disease or the getting old, old age and the death. Only human can experience that. Are there any animal, any living beings? No one can have any idea what is this. When you have very clear understanding about this, it will show you impermanent, what is the unsatisfactory nature, what is the meaning of selflessness. Remember this. Remember this in your entire life. 
why, why if somebody asks what is the the why you are why as a human being why the buddha came to human world to teach dharma and why you as a human being you have the best opportunity to gain this is the the answer for that why because only human being can experience this and then when getting old sickness and the disease those are the three things so us impermanent unsatisfactory nature selflessness so the the most important part without without understanding without seeing getting sick getting old death there is no way you can understand selflessness unsatisfactory nature impermanent there is no way see that is why the dharma means you liberation means the you it is in you it is happening with you if you able to see it it happening with your mother father grandfather grandmother and your four fathers your neighbors everywhere it is happening you are the one who can see that so see it when you able to see that this everything will settle down but it doesn't matter where you go if you don't see those things around you 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 cannot go beyond that so then the liberation means transformation means nibbana means recognizing your true nature and recognizing what is happening within you why we cannot see it because we always in a repetition we always in repeating the memory repeating the mind which we call sanskar or the mental formation volition cankers because of that we have no power to to see this natural phenomena so with that i bless upon you and with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbhit yo vajjantu sabbaroko vinasatu mate bhavatantarayo sukhi dikayuto bhav ಎತ್ತಾವತ್ತಾಚಮೀಂಪದಂಪದಂಪತ್ತಿಸಿದ್ಯಾಸಿದ್ಯಾ ಸಭ್ಯ ಸಂಪತ್ತಿಸಿದ